The Philosophical Antecedents of Psychology Rationalism versus Empiricism Where and when did the study of cognitive psychology begin? Historians of psychology usually trace the earliest roots of psychology to two approaches to understanding the human mind. The first one is philosophy. Philosophy seeks to understand the general nature of many aspects of the world in part through introspection, the examination of inner ideas and experiences. The second one is physiology. Physiology seeks a scientific study of life-sustaining functions in living matter, primarily through empirical observation-based methods. Two Greek philosophers, Plato and his student Aristotle, have profoundly affected modern thinking in psychology and many other fields. Plato and Aristotle disagreed regarding how to investigate ideas. Plato was a rationalist. A rationalist believes that the route to knowledge is through thinking and logical analysis. That is, a rationalist does not need any experiments to develop new knowledge. A rationalist who is interested in cognitive processes would appeal to reason as a source of knowledge or justification. In contrast, Aristotle, a naturalist and biologist, as well as a philosopher, was an empiricist. An empiricist believes that we acquire knowledge via empirical evidence, that is, we obtain evidence through experience and observation. In order to explore how the human mind works, empiricists would design experiments and conduct studies in which they could observe the behavior and processes of interest to them. Empiricism therefore leads to direct empirical investigations of psychology. In contrast, rationalism is important in theory development. Rationalist theories without any connection to observations gained through empiricist methods may not be valid. But mountains of observational data without an organizing theoretical framework may not be meaningful. We might see the rationalist view of the world as a thesis and the empirical view as an antithesis. Most psychologists today seek a synthesis of the two. They base empirical observations on theory in order to explain what they have observed in their experiments. In turn, they use these observations to revise their theories when they find that the theories cannot account for their real-world observations. The contrasting ideas of rationalism and empiricism became prominent with the French rationalist René Descartes and the British empiricist John Locke. Descartes viewed the introspective, reflective method as being superior to empirical methods for finding the truth. The famous expression, cogito ergo sum, which means I think, therefore I am, stems from Descartes. He maintained that the only proof of his existence is that he was thinking and doubting. Descartes felt that one could not rely on one's senses because those very senses have often proven to be deceptive. Locke, in contrast, had more enthusiasm for empirical observation. He believed that humans are born without knowledge and therefore must seek knowledge through empirical observation. Locke's term for this view was tabula rasa which means blank slate in Latin. The idea is that life was an experience, right knowledge on us. For Locke then, the study of learning was the key to understanding the human mind. He believed that there are no innate ideas. In the 18th century, German philosopher Immanuel Kant dialectically synthesized the views of Descartes and Locke, arguing that both rationalism and empiricism have their place. 
Both must work together in the quest for truth. Most psychologists today accept Kant's synthesis.